Okay, I haven't done a David Bradley video in a while. Um, I've got this motor here uh, having to rebuild. I got this. This come off of a 917-57599 superpower. And this is a Model 8B 9050 5.3. Well, when I got this, it had good compression. Uh, I reseated the valves. Had the motor running, but it was making a rattling noise. And I thought, hmm, that don't sound right. So, so I took and, uh, well, back up, when I bought this, it didn't have no oil in the pan, uh, in the motor. So I I figured, well, it's got good compression. Valves are going up and down, you know. It's got spark from the coil. Uh, so I figured, well, I'll put oil in it, see if I can get this thing fired up. Well, I put oil in it, it started running, but it was making a, a, a bad rattling noise in the motor. I'm like, what in the world's going on here? So I started looking, and the oil splasher that... Uh, splashes your oil up into your motor here was laying in the bottom of this motor and then here's your uh, here's the piece that goes on and this tag this tab here was busted that's on the bottom of the piston well I started looking at this piston uh, it's got big grooves cut in it which is no good and same way with this. I mean, it's just ate up bad. Um, so that's where I was at on that. So I've got to rebuild. Uh, I've already got a piston ordered for this um, motor. And everything is, you know, is fine uh, on these. But looking at the carburetor, this is a carburetor, and I ordered, ordered a carburetor kit and got uh, the gaskets and all that. Um, these flow jets on these old ones, where they've been setting and setting for so long. Uh, you see, I've got a, a few of them laying here. These are all bad ones. And you can see where sometimes you get a screwdriver in there, even if you get the proper screwdriver it's still they're frozen they're so bad i tried like here's another one that i got to take apart off of a david bradley and um, i've soaked them in this uh, carburetor cleaner uh, this stuff down here i've soaked them in this stuff for two or three days you know take them apart and everything but uh, you got to take this flow jet out in order to take the top of this carburetor apart. Well, if you can't get this out, because you'll damage uh, by pulling the top of this off. So how I got these out, uh, and I had to replace on some of these motors, they're all, they're all bad. I mean, they were frozen in there. I don't know how long they've been sitting there for who knows, 20, 30 years, I don't know. Anyhow, I used one of these easy outs. This is the number two. And it's a seven by 64 drill is what you want to use. And this is a number two uh, easy out. And you'll drill this right dead center of that hole there. And then get this easy out, but with a little help of the propane torch around heating around this area right here not a whole lot just about 10 seconds you know warm it up and then use your easy out once you get in there and it'll just come right on out you can see where i've got four of these out might possibly have to do this one i don't know yet uh, that's where i'm at that's why this motor is not running but i've got several motors oh and then the crankshaft uh, is all scarred up. I don't know if that could ever be. Uh, it's not this one here. It's 
this crankshaft. I got three of them up here, but this one here is the one that come out of here, and it's not aluminum in there. It's it's actually you could hear it. It's just scratched in there deep. I might be able to repair that. I don't know, but you can see that it's scarred in there because of that aluminum. Just really because this tab was broke and it was just that piston was just sloppy in there just rattling back and forth but now you guys or these people out here that repair on these motors and you see this key here this keyway don't put steel keys in there put those aluminum or aluminum uh, keys back in there order them you know you can get them fairly cheap uh, because not this one this is a spare crankshaft for david bradley and this one is too for a superpower and when i took one of these other motors apart look how this is peeled back the crankshaft somebody had had a steel key in there and they had hit something with their david bradley so hard that it peeled back the crankshaft and right the flywheel so you want to use, uh, I get these keys here, I get them online, I get like 10 in a pack, and I get them on uh, eBay, pretty cheap, they're like 5 bucks for like 10 of them. That's what you want to put back in them, you don't want to put a steel key in there, that's a no-no. And some of the covers uh, on these, it tells you not to put a steel key in there, because it could, it could actually damage your crankshaft. And you can't just find these crankshafts anywhere. But so far, when I did, the, when I reseated the valves on these, the exhaust and the intake, I used this tool right here. The hand crank, uh, old tool, and I had to make this piece here out of a piece of scrap metal so that it would fit inside here and then you can turn it. Those ones that you buy that has a suction cup, they they don't hold on to these because they just, they gets air behind that little tip there and it just wants to come off. So I got this old hand crank valve tool here and I've got another one down here somewhere. Yeah, I've got another old one here. Another one, another old hand crank uh, probably was for an automobile because this one's way too wide so I'd have to make another one to go in that uh, for these motors but anyhow here's some of the motors this motor the one I'm working on right now rebuilding that motor there and this motor right here is identical same model it's come off of a superpower model 8b 905052 it's come off super power and it has four of this pulley here and this is the original pulley and uh, this one come off of a super power and this one come off of a, another David Bradley this one's a model N David Bradley and here's another super power and another super power motor, the, the early version of the super power motor because it has the rounded shroud here and then later, the later model, they came up with a, with a, with a square top here. Um, all of them have the pulleys. Some of them are in good shape and a lot of them are, are not in so good shape. But I've got all these running. When I got these, none of these motors were running. They were either seized up, they were abandoned, you know, on the tractors, some of the tractors were completely, weren't no good. I mean, you could restore them, but I've got these motors here all running, except this one here. This is a Model 6S. I've got to redo the pistons in this because you can just move it back and forth side to side and it just smokes real bad. It came off this old tiller, uh, what they call a Murray tiller. And this one here is a Model 5S. I mean, it runs good. 
but and then here's the the extra set of prongs that go on the on the outside um, I think this was built in uh, I think in the 1950s I think this is a model 5s it's missing the tag somebody took the tag off of it but I got this all up and running and then these motors here and I got all these motors up here running this is another superpower earlier model and this is one of the older models off the 46 with the round shroud and then this one here and I got this motor here it's a model 5s that one back there is a model 6s I got it all these are running except this motor here I got to put a crankshaft in and a coil and it's and it's up and running and then I got this 1937 wash machine motor running but it's missing I'm missing a gas tank and it's a it is a WM and I had to take and take the head off of this and clean it and uh, the intake and that it's half a horse is what this one is and then here's another 5s motor so that's what I've been doing is Putting these motors back together where people have just, you know, they uh, either take them off and they put those, you know, Predator motors on, those Harbor Freight motors, but I prefer these motors any day over, over these uh, newer motors. And these all run within the first or second pull. Uh, I'll have to do a video on some of these. I'll have to put them up on the table here. I just got to make shift. Uh, David Bradley gas tank here in a bowl and I just hook it up I hook this hose up to one of the motors and then this is where I do all my workshop uh, work on my motors and stuff but yeah but don't whatever you do don't put a steel key in there get those aluminum ones because if it ever uh, you hit something with your tractor it will damage the crankshaft and then the crankshaft I don't know if you could even repair uh, something that's been peeled back like that tremendously. They, this was on a David Bradley a superpower. I don't know what they hit to do that. I don't know. They really did some damage. And come over here. Uh, I've got another project. Uh, this potato plow. Here's the original blade on it for the middle buster. But I went and purchased another blade that's a wider to really uh, put the potatoes, push them up out of the ground. And then I've got uh, the sweep that goes with it. This was something that you could get that went on the, the middle buster. And then what they call a corn shovel that went on there too. And this one was uh, 14, I believe it was 14 inches across from that blade to there. And these are for like weeding, you know, for doing in between your rows. And then I use I use these for for putting my potatoes in and digging them up with uh, with these blades here. But this is the original one that come off of it. But I went ahead and got this because it's a lot wider sweep and it can really put some dirt out, push the potatoes out. That's where I'm at. I hadn't done a video in a while, but uh, and then I'm working on. This old hand tiller. Uh, I don't know if David Bradley made some of these type. I believe they did. But here's all their different attachments. Uh, turn turn blade here that mounts on the back of it, and then you got this uh, rake for going in between your rows. And then here's another one that you can uh, for do weeding. Uh, on one side and then you can flip it over and then have a, like a cultivator on this end and then you got another type of weeder the blades a little bit different comes across here and then it can be flipped over and done the same thing but that's where I'm at on this and I had to build handles for this and because the handles that were on it were they were just rotted so I took a piece of scrap board and traced out an old handle and then I put uh, I put linen seed oil 
on the wood to preserve it a little bit longer so it'll last. But I actually use this out in the garden. I had somebody ask me if I would, uh, was going to use this for a yard ornament, and I said, no, I use this in between, between my rows to do the weeding and stuff. And he thought I was joking. I said, no, <laughs> that's what I use. And then uh, I ended up working on this southern cultivator. Oh, the sunlight here. Um, I was missing the middle uh, piece right here for the cultivator. And I found one. Uh, this is not the proper uh, piece up here for the attachment because the ones that are on it are a lot beefier um, and deeper than uh, that one there came off of another cultivator but it works on this one um, other than that that's that's about where I'm at on these David Bradley's uh, and I got another pallet full of motors over there more cultivators and plows just projects uh, working on them, trying to re, uh, bring them back to life. Uh, a lot of them, uh, people just they they set outside, and they you know they get rusty and stuff. And uh, if you can, try to store them uh, under uh, a tarp or a barn. If you got a barn, put them in there. And what I do, uh, I got four David Bradleys down in another shed. What I do is. About every two weeks, I go down there and I start mine up and let them run for about five or ten minutes, and then uh, that way uh, none of the gas will seize up. But these are the ones that I've all redone, brought them all back to life, and I got these pretty cheap. I got a friend that's he's got about fifty parts and tractors in a scrapyard. And I was able to get these motors for a reasonable price. Uh, none of these were running. Some of them, either the coil was either bad or the points, condenser. But these old cast iron motors, I, I love them. They're all American made, you know. Well, that's about it for right now. I'll see if I can do another video on um, starting some of these motors up for you on video. Um, and some of these I've had problems getting the mufflers off. Uh, these pipes here. So what I had to do is heat, heat this up and uh, put a pipe wrench on it and get this off. Some of them are so bad, uh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to remove them off of the, some of the old motors. But there, there's usually uh, a lock screw that you want to put on there it's in here and this one don't have it and I'm gonna have to put one on it uh, you want one that's like this right here you just put them in there a couple threads and then tighten this up you know um, that's an older style muffler there it has the opening on the bottom of it but yeah and then here's some of the older ones where the muffler actually just rotted off or whatever but they don't have that lock screw uh, on here when it should that way uh, you don't have to screw them all the way in but that's where I'm at right now and uh, you guys take care all right I'm out of here